Welcome to my latest project. Today I'm going to show you how to build a simple and useful uh, USB switching device that will allow you to use a single keyboard or a single USB device on two different computers. Uh, the main reason why I started with this project is recently I have built a split mechanical keyboard uh, for use with my work computer. But uh, I have a personal computer on my site along with it and it will it is very hard to reach and I need to use a Bluetooth uh, keyboard to access my personal computer. Uh, so I thought it would be nice if I can reuse the mechanical keyboard that I have built on both the computers. Uh, whenever I'm predominantly working on either one of the computers, usually I switch the USB, but at these days it has been bothering me a bit. Uh, then I wanted to find solution on how I can resolve this. Uh, I have been using Synergy as a, a keyboard mouse sharing software for a very long time. However, sometimes it becomes very difficult when either of the computer is on VPN and I am unable to share uh, configuration between these Synergy uh, systems. I have considered using a KVM switch or a commercially available USB switch. Um, they, they are kind of anywhere between $25 to few hundred dollars depending on technology we are talking about. Then it got me thinking, USB is a simple protocol, can I not design something and build that can help me in my use case. So that's where this project uh, came into existence and today I would like to share some of the details with you all. So first, uh, talking about the USB protocol, it's a very simple protocol. Uh, I, when I am using USB, I'm talking about USB-A, uh, which usually comes with most of the devices. Though we are switching to USB-C, still USB-A is in prevalence. So the way the port looks like is there, there is a rectangular box with a base at the bottom. And there are four leads that are inside of the USB port. They are usually termed as one, two, three, and four. One is typically the plus five volts power that is supplied by USB. Four is ground. Two is data minus and three is data plus. Now there are some color coding schemes that are used, red, black, white and green but this is not universally followed by all cable manufacturers uh, this is basics of usb now moving to a switch uh, the simplicity or at least what was there in my mind when i started about the project is its simplicity we have four leads coming in from one of the device how about i connect to more cables and have a mechanism that will allow me to switch between either of these uh, leads and provide data that from the or from uh, to and from the other device so that is where the idea started so i have a source device i am calling it as st which is connected via usb and i will build a switch in between that will have two leads going out connecting to either of the computers that i am using computer one computer two with some form of a switch in between. So this is the idea with which I started. So we have four leads, one, two, three, four, coming from the source device. And using some mechanism, we have to ensure that the same data lines are passed between device one or computer one as a reference above and the device two at the bottom again i will note the leads now if you think about a very simple solution one way of doing it is directly connecting all the leads Three and four. Now, in this particular configuration, 
this keyboard will be typing exactly the same thing on both the computers. That is not what we want. What we want is the ability to switch between each of the two devices and use them separately. Now, there is, however, there's one uh, pitfall uh, in this particular config, which is line number one is a power line. And if you see, we are trying to connect plus five volts from two different devices onto a single line, which has a possibility to uh, damage electronics on either of the computers that we have connected. Now, this is something which we should solve and one uh, easy way uh, to solve it in a circuit is to include a diode on line one and this will help us in preventing the problem on top of this if you can think about ways on how to switch uh, between either of these two devices or lines or sections as we are seeing here we have our USB switch. Uh, there are multiple configurations in which we can achieve uh, with the with the power safety that we have already talked about here. Uh, we could build a simple switching device just by switching line numbers two and three, uh, basically the data lines. Whenever the switch is toggled, we switch on or off the data lines from either of the computers and we will be able to get there uh, but in today's project or in my project uh, that I am using I will be using a four pole three position switch this could be achieved by a two pole uh, switch or a two pole multiway or a four pole multiway switch uh, but today's project I am using a four pole three position switch uh, I was visiting a local electronics store and I could find this there for around five dollars that's what I have spent and I, I will also talk to you about how to use the switch how I am planning to build the entire uh, project so let's get started on the switch the way uh, the four pole three position switch works is there are four uh, if you can clearly see here or if you can see it here there are four leads in the middle these will act as our source and each of the main leads will have three different poles that it can, or three leads it can connect to depending on position of the switch that is the core technology of uh, how these switches work and it's pretty simple maybe I'll just put it on to the paper so there are there is a four pole switch where my primary leads are going to connect and each of this pole is going to come with three supporting leads and depending on the position of the switch this center pole is going to connect to either of the nodes so that's the technology of this switch i am not going to provide a line diagram for this uh, you, with this basic understanding you should be able to figure out how this node should be connected so moving to the next step uh, I, I want to talk a little about uh, the basics the first thing uh, i observed when i started with this project is some of the USB cables that I have looked at, they come with color coding. Uh, the color coding I've spoken about earlier. Uh, for example, this is a female USB port. Uh, this cable was lying around at my home and I uh, wanted to repurpose it for this particular project. Uh, I don't know if you can clearly see on the camera, but uh, it has four leads coming in, which has four colors, but at the same time, there are a few cables that come with all the leads marked in white and there's a very easy way to figure out uh, what these uh, individual cables uh, connect to and we can assign the numbering for that I would like to bring out my trusty old uh, multimeter so basically we'll just use connect connectivity testing to figure out what are the connecting leads for example if you want to see where the 
probably it is. I, I, I just am facing uh, the USB with base at the bottom and I will touch one of the corner leads, the, cor the lead on the rightmost side and with the other node I will touch one of the cables. In this particular case I am touching the red cable which is giving me the connectivity. That means red is my 5 volt power. Similarly, uh, if I uh, connect the rightmost cable and see that the black cable is now in connectivity mode which is my ground. You can use the same technique on any USB cable and figure out the numbering uh, for the USB lead. The second thing I wanted to talk to you about is uh, how to connect the switch itself. Uh, the one that I have is a four pole three position switch. There are four leads in the middle and 12 leads that are surrounding it but I do not know how to make connections to make sure that I am not cross connecting either of my leads. So there is one easy way to figure out. So as I mentioned this is a three position switch. There are three ways in which this can be turned. So I am starting with the middle position and I will try to figure out uh, how, how the lead positioning works using connectivity testing again. So let us say I want to check uh, for this particular node and I'll go one by one with each of the leads and see where it is connected. So for this switch I have already done the testing and I know that the three leads are right adjacent to it are the leads that are in its position and since this switch is in the middle position this is the node that will connect to the middle position and this will be same with the rest of the leads too and during soldering I can use this connectivity test to make sure I am soldering the wires to same position. So in the next step I will actually be soldering all my USB connectivities uh, or the USB cables and I will get back once the connection is done. Uh, one additional piece of information I would like to give is I cannot leave this switch free floating and I need to find a way to put it into a case so that it is more robust for daily use. So I went ahead and did a search for uh, 3D printable cases that will fit in a rotary switch. Unfortunately I could not find any case that would fit my use case so I, I, I've used a case that had a single USB A and two USB B uh, interfaces at the bottom. So I uh, use 3 modeling software to update it to accept three uh, plain leads which I will directly be soldering to, uh, to my rotary switch and I will be putting uh, them into a case and sticking somewhere onto my table. I will include link to the original case as well as the modified uh, 3D model uh, in the description but this is how I am planning to assemble my USB switcher. Uh, ultimately this is how my switch is going to look and I will be using the switch in this way. Uh, I will see you all once I am done with the soldering. Now I have completed soldering of all the three uh, wires into the requisite leads and I have also done connectivity testing on each of the individual leads and the USB ports to make sure that all my connections are secure, everything is connected. Now what is left for me to do is provide some form of insulation between each of these leads so that there are no short circuits. For that what I will be doing is I will apply some hot glue over uh, the open leads here that will not only secure the cables but also ensure that there are no short circuits that will happen in the future once I have started operating on my devices. Now I have completed uh, adding hot glue to the joints. Everything is working as expected. I have added a bit of hot glue uh, from the inside also so that the wires don't get pulled out. I think everything is ready now. All is left for me is to close the lid, add the screws and we will be ready to test. Uh, I've also 3D printed a 
knob on top of the rotary switch. I will assemble everything and we will be back again for testing. I have now completed assembly of the device. I have attached the back plate and I have fixed knob onto the rotary switch. Uh, right now it is in the center position which is off or which is not connected to either of the computers. I have attached right side of the cable to Windows PC here and left side of the cable which is black to MacBook. Right now I will turn it on to the Mac side and let us see. Works fine. Now I will turn the knob on to the Windows side of uh, connector and Windows side works too. Off position now the keyboard is not connected to either of the computers. Test is successful and looks like the project has worked. Thank you very much for staying uh, till the end. I will see you all in my next project. Thank you.